Good afternoon, everybody. It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord. And I started looking at some of these numbers a lot more intensely over the last week. Mike and I were talking about it off camera. We think this is the perfect topic to bring to you. But let me first Mike, welcome Mike to the channel. Mike, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, man. This is an important topic. I, I honestly had long thought that we could never see an 08 type crash again because yeah. the lending was so different. Yep. And I, I said that very naively. I, I had a very myopic view on the U.S. market. Unfortunately, our friends to the north yeah. could be in real trouble and, yeah. and really experience an 08-like environment, which is unfortunate. And, and you may not know this, but it'll even be worth there because in the U.S., in many states, when you uh, default or lose your home, the debt's kind of wiped away. It's not the same in, in Canada. If you get hit for a 40000 judgment, it sticks with you. It does. Um, mm -hmm. Now, of course, the government could come in and, you know, change the rules of the game midstream. But as it's set up today, oh, I, I, I can't wrap my way around how this doesn't end badly. Sorry. So the three major tent poles of what we're talking about, if you haven't picked up on already, is the Canadian housing market. And is there any contagion in that Canadian housing market for the U.S. housing market? Kind of the general rules of thumb for the Canadian housing market. And again, not a Canadian housing market expert, but it's based on a little bit of research that I've done and what I now understand of the market and having talked to some of my friends north of the border, eh? Mm. And I love my Canadian brethren, even though the national sport is not hockey, it is actually curling. They are still some of the greatest hockey players in the world now. And yes, I said some of, and I know that I'm going to get some Canadian hate mail. That <laughs> said, let's look at the market and the market really there where it really truly differs is a majority of the mortgages, majority, they are all not fixed rate mortgages, but all of the banks, but one offer only a five-year arm product. That is the, usually that's going to be the longest term that you're going to get is a five-year long adjustable rate mortgage. And the low rates in Canada started about five years ago between four and five years ago. So now those resets, Mike, those resets are gonna start rolling and rolling heavy. And that means that people are looking at massive, massive payment increases. Yeah, I would ask anybody here who has a mortgage or even just knows how to, I mean, pull up a mortgage calculator online. Mm -hmm. I mean, the more and more I look at this, the more and more fearful I get. I'm like truly like, we are going to see Canada go through an 08 mo moment. So let, let's yeah. do some math. Yep. Just pull up, you know, mortgage calculator, put in $500,000. I mean, just any, you know, do that. And, you know, Canada, if you guys don't know, had very low interest rates there. It was not uncommon to have a one. Yes. On yes. their five, five, uh, five uh, year arms. Correct. You know, so you, you know, go like one, three, one, four. And if you guys haven't figured out, the, the Canada Central Bank, much like the U.S., has started to raise rates. And I would argue that the Canadian Central Bank is actually very aggressive. And they just did a surprise 100 basis point move yesterday. Yes. What does this all mean? It means very likely that people will, when it comes time to refi or recast that loan, are going to be going from a 1-4 to a 3-4 or 3-8. Heaven forbid, four two. Dude, I. It's they unaffordable. Still, it's they still, unaffordable. They still do thirties, right? They do. 30s. I think they're twenty five actually, but let's just yeah. use thirty. It doesn't as long as it's apples to apples, you'll get the scale. Sure. So we're looking at. We're looking at for a, and a lot of properties. This is a this is an inexpensive property in like Toronto. Oh, it's. So I mean, a, it, yeah, a million dollars. Okay. So I'm using a million dollars as the number. Go for so it. So a million dollars, your 1.75% interest rate mm -hmm. is going to be 3,451.20. Okay. Okay. Yep. If we just change that to what's the new current rate? Three, I don't know. Let's say three and a half. Yeah. 3.5. Oh, no. 4490. Yeah. So this is a thousand bucks and let's, you know, that's a thousand bucks. That's a 30, that's a 30% increase in your mortgage payment before taxes and insurance increase, which I'm assuming are up as well. Uh, most people are not getting wage increases of 
I read an article in the Wall Street Journal, I think it was eight, maybe 10 weeks ago, where they were estimating this was before the surprise 100 basis point move. They were estimating that somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of homeowners would not be able to afford their new payment yes. before yes. the one percent increase. Yes. Again, this. <sighs> what causes a housing crash? Forced sellers. Yep. Wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of forced sellers. When you have a debt structure that cascades and then only gets worse, right? The payment goes up, the value, it's just, oh my God. But you can, but you can only refi out, right? When did we hear that in, yeah. in five, six, and seven? You can always refi out. You can always refi out. And so a lot of these people can refi out, did so, bigger number. Maybe they use their houses as piggy banks. Maybe they didn't. But most importantly is that one five rate or one seven five rate is likely gone forever. Yeah. And again, this doesn't end well. I mean, you could no. look at this in Canada. I mean, again, so a couple of other things you don't know about Canada's housing market. You know, we just talked about New Hampshire being the most unaffordable in video number one. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I don't know if you've actually looked at the numbers. New Hampshire would be considered affordable in Canada. Oh yeah, no, for sure. At four Toronto, six, Vancouver. Yeah. Yep. You know, again, Canada's housing market is two or three x less affordable. Yes. Less affordable. Yes. Yep. This is before the interest rate rise. Yep. Right. So again, when you talk to Canadians about how unaffordable we are, they laugh at us. They do. And then they really laugh when they realize we have thirty year fixed rate debt. So, right. um, I'm I'm somewhere between concerned and frightened. Yeah. That the Canadian housing market is going to experience a disaster unfold over the next one to three years. Now, it could be solved overnight. Uh, the, the Canadian government could say wishy washy. Uh, everybody gets five more years as is. Yep. You're OK. Everybody's OK there, because, again, if you're making the payment now, you're making the payment the next five years. Um, they could flip everybody to 30 year money overnight. I mean, they, they can fix this. However, if you know, at least my experience with Canadian history, having studied it a little more than you over the last couple yeah. of decades, um, they're much more free market than they we are. are, right? You yeah. think the U.S. market is free market, but every time we have a crisis, the government comes in and screws it up, right? Mm -hmm. Bails people out. Canada, historically, not a lot of bailouts. Nope. Not, I mean, they've done some, but not a lot. They are very apprehensive. So it would not, there's a lot of, I've, I've started talking about Canada a lot. Some people are like, oh, Michael, they'll just come out and bail everybody out just like we do. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not in Canada's DNA. I don't it, know. Well, so, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you know more about this than I do. They're currently not allowing and haven't allowed any foreign investment in like 12 or 18 months. They did. I think it was, uh, it might be up to two years. I forget when they signed it. It might be 18 months. But yeah, and they just extended it for another two years, right? Mike, they're going to need that foreign money to bail us bail, bail out, right? Well, again, well, it depends on what you're trying to solve. If you're trying to create a more affordable market, they probably keep it away, let it crash and go, hey, look, everybody can buy a home now. But then there's a whole bunch of people who are saddled with, you think student debt is bad in the US. You, you get saddled with housing debt that you can't pay off because you, you know, you owe a hundred, you wrote it for, you know, you owe a, a million, you sell it at 800. Canada is going to kick in. It's going to say, hey, you, you still owe 200. They don't wash that away. So, no. man, it's, it's a mess. It's a, it can't. My hope is they find a way to fix it. I think the easiest way is to extend and pretend on the mortgage rate. Hey, yeah. everybody's good for five years. Let's get through this. But, man, if they, do, they don't do something short of that, disaster. I mean, Mike, the numbers are nuts. They're not like... Yeah. And again, they, they did a surprise 100 basis point move and you already had roughly, let's just round it to 30% of folks who couldn't afford it. You add on another hundred, another so, whole point and you're probably not done. This gets bad fast. Yeah. I I'm, I'm very concerned. Uh, I don't know that it has any contagion to the U S I don't think it. Does. that's a good, that's a good question, right? It, it, so I do not know of many financial institutions um, that have huge Canadian 
like the Bank of Canada does, but it's a it's a Canadian financial institution, right? right? TD, um, TD does TD, TD um, right? Yeah. Again, yeah. So uh, the the question that we would have to know is like the Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo. What is their presence? I'm sure they have some. Yep. But is it a 5% book of business? Is it a 15? Is it a 50? Like one thing I would love to know, just thinking off the top of my head is which U.S. institution has the largest Canadian book Disclosure. of mortgages? That's what I'd be looking for. If I was a financial institution, that's what I would look for because I would be reserving for bad debt right now. Uh, I mean, how could you not? What, uh, what American? Go look at you, Google. Yeah. And if I were to guess, I actually have no idea. Yeah, I have guess. no idea. I've, it's probably I, I'd probably go Wells Fargo or J.P. Morgan. Uh, let's see, Canadian Bank. I'm Maybe not even sure they slice it. I haven't looked at their financials in a long time. I don't remember oh. anybody slicing it that way. No, uh, I don't see. <clears throat> I don't see any of that. I see all of the Canadian banks listed. Yeah. TV. So, folks. TD so, might be the closest. Yeah. So folks, if you're watching this and you want to do a Google research and get some points from us, tell us which American bank, which you hopefully know what I mean by that, which the American institution has the largest book of mortgages uh, with Canada housing. I'd love to know that. Yeah, very much so. Mike, love talking about this with you. We'll definitely get some feedback from the viewers. Again, Mike and I are not Canadian market experts. We're only outside looking in. Mainly because you won't let us invest there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't buy. You said yeah. no. I mean, I mean, Canada, you're close enough. Like we can get up there. So that's, and I know that was horrible. Um, uh, and, and just for the record, uh, I've been to Canada 50, 60, 70 times. It's a wonderful country. The people are amazing. Love it. My favorite it. city around the world is Toronto. Uh, Toronto's awesome. Yeah, Toronto. and, and I hate saying that because I love the Bruins and I hate the Leafs, but you know, it, but, but you know what? You guys are going to win a cup before us anyway. So it doesn't really, it, it, it pains me to say that. At least it's not Vancouver. So, <laughs> or, or even worse, the Habs, Montreal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't, can't, can't ever root for them. So Mike, thanks so much for doing this video with me. Tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. One rental at a time. Awesome. And live stream tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time goes for an hour. Lots of fun. If you want to make sure you get your question answered. You know what? List it, but you know what? He's not getting anywhere near through all the questions because I actually attend. Super chat the man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, super I will. Chat. Yeah, you super chat me. I'll read your question first. Yeah, yeah, super chat. That's the way. I mean, that's the that's the Google etiquette and the YouTube etiquette. So super yeah. chat. I know you get your question answered. I can't promise that you like the answer or not. But as yeah, I no, always, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> as I always say, we try and create great content for you. Please like, subscribe, and most importantly, we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much, everybody.